Arigashimasu. Welcome back to the Gojuryu Karate Center. Today, um, I think what I, I'm going to start working on is how to work from kakie and how to work from grab. And it's uh, taking from something that was asked um, telephonically, um, a sensei on the East Rand or the eastern side of Johannesburg asked me to consider making a few videos from the grab uh, position with a follow-up punch or hook, etc., and see how things unfold. Totally unrehearsed, totally unplanned, <laughs> as always. So we're going to work on the basic premise of how kakie works. So we're going to take sanchin dutch as our stance. One hand solar plexus, other hand is catching. The hand position is like this. And as we press, our hand is going to turn out. This is kind of a direct pressing motion. We can also take up and down. And then from time to time, we will use circular motion. So we're going into this position. Brian presses and... It's just simply this. Now, for most people, this is a draw, uh, a, a drill for shoulder conditioning, and you'll find one person standing and holding the other person pushing, and then the process is repeated. The person, come on, Brian, hold. The person is holding and pushing, and it becomes this very, very big, hard, muscular movement. And this, this is fine. Um, it's good for development of shoulder strength as well as the conditioning within the joint for the purposes of karate. All right, so we're in this kakie position. We're holding, and now if I'm holding and Brian pushes, now he holds, now he punches. Okay, so he does a jodanzuki. One, two. And so here's our first bunkai from Geeks at Edge. Block, clear, and hitting or striking as we go. So let's do that again. So Brian pushes, he traps my arm, and he hits with that hand. You must hold this arm down so that you've got control. Okay. And he's trying to help whack me in the face. Okay, so let's do that again. He's gonna push, hold, hit. Okay, I'm gonna allow my hand to slip from his grip. One. Two, three, four. Now, that is with limited foot movement. And what we can do is we can build firstly in a static position. So one, two, three, four. And then build the idea of changing the direction and moving. Okay. And... I could probably even go this way, which gives me another option, but I have to be vigilant of that hand. So, first bunkai of Geeks at Itch from Kakie position. Okay, so again, he's gonna assert, he's gonna take a shot, and I'm going to redirect. Come on, Brian, assert, shot, redirect. Another idea, he pushes and he kicks. One, two, and away we go. Come on, one, two. So this is fundamentally a basic set of ideas. It's not advanced, it's not street fighting, it's not practical MMA, it is just trying to use kakie as a transitionary tool to get us from keonipan and bunkai towards something that will ultimately become randori and to build that sensitivity around all the exercises. Okay. Next one, Brian, chest punch, okay? So, when you're ready, Brian, punch. One, two, 
three, four, five. Okay. Don't like being on that side. So we'll make it work on the inside because the inside works a little bit better on this particular bunkai. When you're ready, Brian. And it resembles the kata a little bit more. Okay. So we're getting a good idea. Come on. So push, hit, yeah. What are you doing with the push? Moving your arm out the way. Okay, so. All right. Hey, and uh, with Okay, not so good. A bit better. Obviously, that's got a really, really nice play on it. And it's got a really nice play on ideas. Okay, punch. same one, Chudan. Okay. Push it this way. Yeah, that's it, okay. All right, and so it becomes that much harder to do than just the standard bonkai. It's a step up, and it obviously needs work and polish um, as we go. But I like to play with the idea of kaki at first because it helps us to get the idea of what's happening with the hands. So we're going to work on the bunkai now for geeks at edge and we're going to work from a grab. So if I'm minding my own business and Brian grabs onto a hand and then he takes a punch or a swing. Now I have a limitation or an advantage. He has a limitation or advantage depending on how you view it. And he takes the punch. One. Okay. Two, three, four. Let's have a look. One, two, three. So just bring the arm up. One. Let's start with that. So one. Hook. Two. Three, better idea. Let's go again. I, I like to add the turn in. It was the first move of the kata is the turn. So one, two, three, first idea. And again, one, two, hook, three, four, second idea. And grab on. One, two, hook, punch. And take another hook. Ah, oh, it doesn't matter. High punch, okay? Let's do it again. So, one, two, three, four, five. And we start getting a couple of more interesting ideas. Okay, same thing. We're facing each other. He grabs on. He's taking the hook. One, two, okay? So, I literally have yanked my hand that way to help facilitate the block. So as he hooks, one, two, three, okay? Maybe better that if he's hooking and I want to stop this, I, I'm, I'm, I'm predisposed to wanting to stop the left hook with the right hand by trapping somewhere near the wrist. Okay, so that brings that up now. Maybe I've got to move that way. But if he's got a really good grip on, chances are I'm not going to be able to move his arm. So as he hooks, one, two, three. Uh, let's change side, please. So he does one. I'm using the shikodach and this arm position here and dropping the elbow in before I'm using that. I'm just thinking of ways to hurt him more than anything else, but to work out of this grabbing position. 
grabs onto my hand, and he does chest punch, easy, arm, knee, okay, maybe grab that way, okay, now chest punch, ah, hmm, grab again, punch, two, three, oh, this is quite nice too, but I don't think it'll happen in reality. No stepping on the punch, just grab step. Well, whatever. Um, improvise, adapt, overcome. So if we're grabbing that side, and it's a punch, into there. All right, we do it again. Punch. Use. Clear him. Okay. I like that. <laughs> okay, one, two, okay, foot's there already. Um, still got that hand. That hand's probably gonna hook or and a nice place for us to deal with problems. Okay, he grabs on, punts one, two, three. Um, I've entrapped his arm one side and punch, punch, I'm gonna grab to pull and rotate. Okay, so I'm thinking grab, pull, rotate. And think about the changing of the feet in the kata. Let's just go this way a bit, Brian. Think about the changing of the feet. You come up, down. And we have somebody on the ground. Okay, let's do one, two, three, four. And just try and move around your opponent a bit more than anything else. Punch. Uh. And just vary the stepping. See which way works best for you. Because sometimes your opponent is big. You're not going to get that much. Sometimes you need to yank and pull. Push your opponent to try and get a bit of a uh, better angle. Sometimes you need to hyper extend their back or draw out their legs. One. The ending of the kata. I like that. <laughs> so that's uh, Geeks at Itch. Uh, working a little bit off the grab using uh, a little bit of kaki as our starting point and trying to get a blend of kaki ideas as well as gigs at itch from grab. Obviously, it is open to development. It's open to practice. It is not cast in stone. It is uh, the exploration of your kata that makes it so special. And obviously, as you are training and working with your partner and your friend, you are developing a deep understanding of your karate, your kata, as well as yourselves. It is not self-defense. It is not on the street. Snippets of it will always be useful on the street. Ideas and um, some principles that are within the kata, we're slowly peeling back the layers to see those principles and to work towards something that hopefully we never have to use, but hopefully we can get to a point where we can train it in a relatively resistance not premeditated because obviously I'm doing this and the next minute there's a we're doing this and the next minute there's a punch coming at us and we have to avoid it and respond and in doing that what happens is we hopefully prepare ourselves for eventuality that if we do need to use it on the street there is something that we can start grabbing the principles um, this morning I noticed somebody had left a comment that none of the stuff 
would work on a street fight and he was commenting on a video on the Qatar 10 show. You're 100% right. I can't lie. None of the stuff that you see me doing against a partner standing statically would ever work on a street fight. I admit it. But the principles within that might be useful. So maybe you watch a few more of my videos and hopefully you'll see that we're not being bashful and saying, well, this is the only way and this will always work in every situation. We never say that. We always say that the street is unpredictable, it is unrehearsed, it is unrelenting, and it is brutal. And we train for the idea that we can develop some skills that maybe we can take an idea of this skill or that skill and utilize it within the street context. Nobody can prepare ourselves, none of us can prepare ourselves adequately for the street. So it's important to know that that is how you work towards it. We're a channel dedicated to working towards the process and helping people enjoy the art of karate do and in particular the art of Gojuryu Karate Do. Thank you very much. Arigato gozaimas. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Sayonara. Okay, stop for a second. Oh, we'll edit this out. Brian, your badge is coming off, Brian. Quickly get a pair of scissors and clip it off. Looks terrible, you have to sew it back on later. Ay, 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 caramba.